We have opened a new channel for those who like to look at the detailed process of creating a project. While there are only a few videos, but we are working on their creation. We promise that it will be interesting. The link is in the description. Hi friends, creating this video initially, I just wanted to show you examples of the recycling of conventional disposable batteries. But in the end I decided to touch on the global theme of environmental contamination. Therefore, I kindly request that you watch this video to the end and, if possible, share it with your friends on social networks. For thousands of years, our ancestors lived and used the gift of nature mainly without contaminating it. But 300 years ago, everything changed dramatically. With the invention of the steam engine, the Industrial Revolution began. Later, Alessandro Volta will invent the first chemical source of current and humanity starts to study the wonders of electricity, which were previously considered to be a divine phenomenon. With the invention of internal combustion engine, we, for the last 150 years, have almost completely exhausted the oil resources that nature has created for millions of years. Over the past 50 years, we conquered space, learned the power of an atom and water droplets, created weapons of unprecedented power. We began to create machines that work for us, machines with tremendous computing power. For 50 years, the world has changed beyond recognition. Not long ago, we were happy with the push-button dialers and could not even dream that in a couple of years the technology would change so much that we would have a whole computer in our pocket. Our whole world is based on electricity. Without electricity, we will be rejected in the Stone Age. The portable equipment always needs power supplies. Batteries and batteries that we use and throw away so much that Mother Nature can't recycle them. Such a rapid development of technology will eventually lead to technological singularity. Artificial intelligence machines will create other machines and the human will be left behind. We will need batteries and other chemical sources millions of times more than now. But even before this happens, the current environmental contamination is already reaching catastrophic proportions. Many don't notice this or don't want to notice. Why do we have to care about ecology? But the problem is more global than it may seem. Because of this contamination, massive cancers and genetic abnormalities have become common and each of us is responsible for this, for our future and for our children's future. The metal case of a battery thrown into nature will eventually decompose and then toxic substances such as zinc, magnesium, lead, mercury, cadmium, tin, alkali and acids will end up in the ground and in water and no filter will clean them and we will drink, eat and inhale all these. I know that, at the moment, especially in small cities, there is a problem with the disposal of conventional chemical power sources and batteries are simply thrown away at a landfill. If I say that only one battery can pollute 20 square meters of land and population of one city throwing one battery a week in a year can turn entire city into a lifeless toxic zone. But what will it change if you do not know where to put the exhausted batteries? Today I will offer several methods to solve this problem. We use ordinary or saline batteries everywhere. Everyone knows that they have a voltage of one and a half volts. They are different form factors and they have a different service life depending on the price and manufacturer. Also, there are alkaline batteries which are usually more expensive but they have a longer service life. Nevertheless, all these batteries are all disposable. If the voltage on them becomes less than 1 volt, as a rule, the device in which they were installed stops working. Many people know that there are batteries of similar sizes that are rechargeable, unlike ordinary batteries. The disadvantage is their price. They are more expensive, but will serve much longer, because you can always charge them. 
As a rule, accumulator capacity is indicated in milliampres hours and they have a voltage of 1.2 volts, unlike ordinary batteries, of 1.5 volts. But most portable electronics works with them without problems. In many countries, nickel-cadmium batteries still can be found on sale, as well as more modern nickel-metal hybrid batteries. They are also Li-in with USB charging, which I strongly advise. Replacing ordinary batteries by rechargeable, you pay only once and forget about replacing the batteries for several years. This method doesn't solve the problem entirely, but dramatically reduces the number of batteries consumed. And I assure you, it's cheaper than buying disposable batteries. But what about the batteries that are already dead? The answer is simple. If there is no place to utilize them, you can squeeze all out of them. How to do it? Very simple. As said earlier, we throw away the batteries when they are discharged, but they are discharged to the end? In fact, no. They can still serve for quite some time. Here is a simple extra low voltage converter, or rather a whole flashlight that will work from dead batteries. The trick is that such a simple circuit will allow you to collect a good splash light with your own hands for the minimum time. This will pump out all the juice from the dead battery. How to make it? We take any faulty energy saving lamp and carefully open the base, but be careful not to break the bulb. We must take out the ballast board. From this board we need such a ring and one of the transistors. By the way, transistors depending on the power of the lamp may look different. All of them fit to our purpose. The layout of their pins is also the same. Next, we need to remove all windings from the ring, leaving only the bare core. Then you need to find the wire in the lacquer insulation with a diameter from 0.1 to 0.3 mm. By the way, there is a choke on the same ballast board. It is wound with a suitable wire, so we can disassemble it and use the wire for our purposes. The converter has two windings. We take two pieces of wire with a length of about 20 to 30 centimeters. For greater clarity, I will use wires of different colors. Next, twist the ends of the wires as shown and start winding. We make about 20 turns. After winding, we have four ends. Now we need to connect them to get the midpoint of the circuit. The beginning of the first winding is connected to the end of the other and soldered for greater reliability. You can connect the wires one way or the other. Such a connection is wrong, will not work. Next, we collect the circuit. I think there will be no problems with this because everything is shown very clearly. The circuit includes one kilo ohm resistor. The color marking of the resistor is now in front of you. Its resistance isn't critical and may deviate up or down by 50%. The most common LEDs you can buy in the store get out of the old lighters or flashlights. They are now everywhere. LEDs have polarity, roughly speaking plus and minus. If they are connected incorrectly, they will not work. The assembled circuit works immediately. The number of LEDs can be increased by connecting them one way or another. In this case, the battery will discharge faster, but the flashlight will emit more light. The presented circuit begins to work from a voltage of 0.6 to 0.7 volts, which means that it will discharge the already dead battery to the specified voltage. 
If you will use the old germanium transistors, then the circuit will discharge the battery to almost zero or more precisely to 0.2 volts. This is more preferable since we will use maximum life of battery. This compact converter can be built into any cheap flashlight with a battery compartment. I advise you to make this sample device with your child. It will be interesting for the child. And most importantly, in this way you will provide little help to the planet. You can make several of these flashlights for different batteries. The lanterns themselves can be used for their intended purpose or as a nightlight. The LED from one battery will be illuminated for many days. But what will we do if the batteries are completely dead after the flashlight? Same as me. Take a 3 liter jar, a plastic cap and store batteries until better times, until officials wake up and understand the seriousness of this problem. Then, there will be recycling points in any cities and villages, so we will wait. What is the hidden function of an ordinary battery? The answer is obvious. The battery is a chemical delayed action weapon. Please rate this video and share with your friends. I wish health to all of you, friends. Let the sky always be blue, the air is clean, the land is fertile, and so that our descendants don't have to kiss in a gas mask. Everyone creates their own destiny, and in our hands is the fate of it. If we sit back and do nothing, we will turn our planet into a place where even bacteria cannot survive. That's all, until we meet again. With you as always was Kassian TV.